Give me an update on the microeconomics of oil right now, the supply and demand dynamics, those partial differentials. What matters? Um, I would argue the shutdown in China. Um, the magnitude of the demand shock that we're seeing is on par with 08, 09. And I think, I think that one thing that very distinguishes this coronavirus from, let's say, SARS and other types of epidemics or pandemics is the, the magnitude of the quarantine. Uh, we, we estimate um, demand in China is down anywhere from two to three million barrels a day, which is on par to 08, 09. Um, now the question is, can OPEC respond to that? The problem is, the reason why the quarantine's big, they don't want this lasting uh, much longer. So it's a very deep, sharp drop in demand that will most likely rebound in a few months. Tell us the heritage of this. I want to link this into the names we know from Goldman Sachs, Hotsius in economics and others. The, the idea of David Costin and Abby Joseph Cohen looking at the equity markets. What you just said is a profound statement. Let's begin with China GDP. I got a six model. Where are you modeling as a shop China GDP on, 12 uh, months on out? A, on an annualized basis, the, the drop is um, down to 4% growth. 4.0. So Let's be careful. 4.0. Yeah, and, and if you think about the impact that that has on first quarter, almost all of that's going to be concentrated over the next um, six to eight weeks. The 4.0 percent, how do you extrapolate that over then to the oil market? Are you going to see a jump condition where we I, move actually, from a you know 50 what we level? Find historically, the impact on the oil market is 2x what you see as the impact on GDP. And the reason for that has to do with the fact that you're not only shutting down activity in the country, you're shutting down all the travel coming Give in. Give me a single point up. estimate on Brent. Uh, we're at 63 for the year. All right, Jeff, if, if what would happen for that estimate to, to go down? Are OPEC reacting quickly enough to it? They can't do anything about it because if they start to cut production right now, they're impacting supplies for April de delivery. Um, and that's kind of the key issue, that they're del the, the dilemma, why it's taken so long for the JTC to come out with the recommendation of 600,000 barrels per day last night, is that they know they can't do anything about what's currently going on inside China. And you look at the curve, the curve is pricing in it as a contender go in the front end and then it moves back into a backwardation further out on, out on the curb. And so I think what they have to realize all they can do at this point is clean up any type of surplus that ends up being generated. Okay, but so what are we doing, Jeff? I mean, there's, there's been so many factory shutdowns, right? There's extra barrels that usually get sold to China. What happens to them? Do they just get turned back? Well, that's a, they, they have taken uh, force majeure on some of the cargoes coming in that direction that have impacted Atlantic Basin crews. But I think the, the other point there, and with the way we're thinking about it, is they're likely to build inventory inside China. And again, you really can't see that. So we don't really know what the exact magnitude of the demand shutdown is, because what they're likely doing is feeding this into storage facilities. This is incredibly important. I want to go back. You mentioned force majeure, and we see this out of Sinuk. Do you just assume and I'm talking about Goldman Sachs as a shop, that there will be an application of force majeure on the Pacific Rim due to this dearth of demand, that they're just every company's going to come in and basically it's going to be a cram down against the industrial West and Mideast. I don't know how that doesn't happen. I mean, you got um, at this point right now, um, but also it's the other way too. And you know, what I learned actually yesterday was that the copper supply, China's short copper, but they're short, they're cutting the output of copper because their smelters can't operate. So stuff that's supposed to go out is not going out, stuff that's supposed to go in is not going in. Within the microeconomics of 4.0% GDP, explain those instabilities that are wrought through Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. This is really important, folks, taking microeconomic foundations into a broader Pacific Rim GDP. Where's the, the test point, the tensile point there? I, I think one of the big issues that's going to be have an impact on global growth are the supply chains. Because not, you know, once we start cutting the ability to deliver one item, then you cut further and further down the chain and you end up with a chain reaction that becomes much larger. And I think the ones that are most vulnerable to this are going to be Germany, Japan, Korea, other, let's call it old economy type of countries that are really focused on creating capital goods and manufacturing goods that go in and out of China.